just to give you a background on like why am I here and, and how uh, we could sort of get to that $65 billion road. Uh, I'm Jatendra Varal. I'm the um, Senior Internet Analyst for Bloomberg Intelligence, which is Bloomberg's in-house research uh, platform. Over the last 11 years of my life, I have been uh, studying, covering, researching the technology space. Uh, started in New York covering hardware and storage and then moved to Hong Kong to set up the APAC uh, tech research business, did the supply chain over there, Apple supply chain and uh, consumer electronics and things like that. And about three years ago, I moved to San Francisco covering the internet space. So now I cover Google, Facebook, Snapchat, Amazon, Twitter, all the fun companies that make sure that I do not sleep. And through that experience of looking at hardware to the supply chain, to the internet move, what we are seeing is the evolution of all emerging trends in technology are always carrying the same path. Virtual reality and augmented reality, and virtual reality in specific, we have been hacking at it since 1995. You know, it started with Nintendo's Game Boy, but in 2011, it got a rebirth with Oculus, and then we have been evolving since then. But if you look at any emerging trend that has taken off in the history of technology, one thing you'll realize is that it only works if the technology disappears. It only works if technology disappears because, you know, for any emerging trend to really work, there are two things that need to be ready, the technology, but more importantly, the consumer. You know, Microsoft launched IPTV in the year 2000, and Netflix took off in the year 2016 with streaming. So obviously there was a big gap between that. And with virtual reality and augmented reality as we stand today, like I said, it needs to disappear for it to work. And right now it's literally in your face. And that's uh, about to change. But why has there been so many disappointments in this emerging trend? You know, over the last couple of years, $20 billion have been deployed uh, across the ecosystem to do R&D, to push into this new emerging uh, category. And if you look at the user surveys, it was not cost that actually sort of like caused the disappointment. It was basically user experience. We are so used to high resolution content everywhere, on your cell phones, on your TVs, uh, everywhere you see it's high resolution content. And with bandwidth limiting content on VR and AR, you know, the experience was sort of going backwards. There was an interesting picture uh, of a, a conference where, uh, I believe it was a Samsung conference, and they were showing the crowd wearing the VR headsets, and Mark Zuckerberg was walking by them. They didn't even realize he was there. But if you look at the picture, everybody wearing those headsets, uh, you thought something really horribly went wrong with humanity. And, and that, the reason why that's happening is because the ecosystem right now is still evolving. It's not really uh, ready yet uh, in terms of the supply chain, the products that are needed to evolve to make it more like a Walkman moment, uh, if you may. You know, before the Walkman came out, uh, it was not cool to carry something on your head and walk around, but that changed everything because it was simple and the whole ecosystem was there in your pocket. With AR and VR, what we are seeing is if you look at the supply chain, forget what the companies are pitching. Look at the supply chain. Is the processing power there? Is the uh, display technology there? Is the bandwidth uh, that's needed there? And if you map that evolution with where this technology is heading, what you'll notice is over the last six to seven years, it has been pretty much tracking like what any other piece of technology ever did. The only difference, I guess, is you know, with the internet world, information just flies around, so you can see this evolution happening in front of you. So you see these disappointments happening in front of you, versus before it'll be, it'll be just buried. But what we're seeing changing, really, is the enterprise market uh, is coming to life in a, in a very short period of time. It's suddenly becoming a want-driven products to a need-driven product. So when we mapped uh, the AR and VR adoption curve to all previous emerging technologies, what we noticed is like oh, in the next couple of years, we should be ready for mainstream adoption. And that's mostly because of enterprise and mostly because of 5G uh, coming online. If you look at this chart, it'll basically show you that augmented reality is actually surpassing virtual reality. Um, and why is that? That's because the AR adoption curve in general 
when it comes to revenues, it's been driven by the enterprise side of the equation. You know, we saw Microsoft got a $480 million contract for HoloLens from the U.S. military, and that sort of sparked a lot of debate, like, hey, are we missing something here that's happening, uh, that, the, the, that there's a need-driven market that's happening that we need to get the bandwagon on? On, on the left side, it's actually showing you how many cell phones out there today and in the next couple of years would be AR capable. So Microsoft, Apple, Google, they're all trying to sort of shore up the ecosystem. You know, what Google and Apple is trying to do with the AR thing, you, you see the pictures with the new iPhones, it's uh, AR is like left, right, and center, and what they're trying to do is sort of pave the foundation while the supply chain is being ready. It'll take a couple of years for the supply chain being ready, but it's paving the foundation for the developer ecosystem to be ready and the consumer to get uh, some glimpses of that. We saw that with Pokemon Go uh, and some other apps here and there. But what they're trying to do is by the time they're ready to launch this next big thing of theirs, on day one, all these experiences and ecosystems are ready. So in the next couple of years, you're gonna have three to four billion devices that are AR capable. And that's why AR is getting so much more uh, traction in terms of investments and things like that. But this chart shows that, tra that traction is growing more in commercial. And that's the difference between like what our expectations were before when we went through this whole AR, VR thing, maybe this is the next big consumer product, but in enterprise, the need is bigger. Why is the need bigger? If it actually saves you money, makes you money, or saves you time. If any of those uh, avenues are served, then adoption grows. So what we are seeing is with after uh, the Microsoft's um, uh, announcement with HoloLens and the military, we saw like how is the investments growing across different verticals. Obviously gaming you know, is always the main topic of discussion with respect to VR uh, and AR for that matter. But this graph shows like manufacturing and automotive suddenly has stepped up its investments. Uh, we are seeing education, we are seeing real estate. So we are seeing like a lot of need-driven applications. You know, a real estate example is a great one because when you're trying to uh, modify your home or like visualize things, you're spending so much money and time to figure out what do you really want. And a lot of uh, real estate uh, companies now have started to pitch VR solutions for visualization and things like that. Obviously, the bulkiness of the product is, it will disappear later on as the supply chain evolves, but until then, the manufacturing sector, the industrial sector, the enterprise sector can actually digest it because their needs are different. When we uh, look at surveys of how uh, these companies are trying to deploy it, you know, number one is customer service. Number two is product design. Now, how are they using these things? They're basically you know, using you know, mobile apps to shoot the product in AR and, and, sudden, and go back to the customer service to tell you whether something's wrong with it or you have to return it or whatever. Um, in product design, we're seeing a big push from industrial companies to in visualization uh, in general. Again, it's all saving money and time. Employee training, that's a big one. In fact, uh, if you look at, the, uh, if you look at like, what the industrial companies have been doing across different sectors, there's been a big push towards predictive maintenance. You know, the airline industry is investing heavily in software so that they can save $30 billion of money spent due to flight delays and things like that. Uh, Caterpillar actually has a, an AR platform that helps you do predictive maintenance of their uh, machines in the field so you can overlay information and look at that. So when you think about billions of dollars uh, being spent in the industrial space, in the enterprise space, your attention goes to this chart, which is, in my opinion, the most interesting one. More than $300 billion every single year spent in employee training. And this does not include education. So we are talking about money spent in healthcare to train doctors, uh, nurses, uh, money spent in, in mining to train the machine operation and maintenance, money spent in how customer service should be done. Uh, so training, uh, is finding a very good avenue for AR to actually take off. So the military example that I gave you, that's pretty much this. It's for training the military with augmented reality for Microsoft. And what you're gonna end up seeing is, this is because there's so much money at the line here. $300 billion being paid, it actually saves you money. So that's why the higher price of commercial AR and VR uh, solutions won't be a deterrent, 
uh, what we're seeing is you'll see enterprise probably surprise uh, going forward. Retail is embracing this uh, as well, uh, not just because they're scared of Amazon, they're also scared of Amazon, but over here, you're seeing that you know, smart tryout rooms, facial recognition sensors and the Amazon Go like stores, augmented reality experiences to encourage buyers to buy these products and, and, and things like that. Uh, what we are seeing with mobile AR on this side really is the mobile e-commerce market that's in the next five years gonna cross $600 billion is seeing consumers uh, have bounce in terms of like, well, are they able to visualize this product or not? And when we looked at the consumer surveys about like, what do you want from AR and VR really? The number one ask, the number one product category they highlighted was e-commerce. They wanted to visualize their products. So we anticipate with, you know, mobile AR's install base going up with Google and uh, Apple, uh, pushing it aggressively, you will see more efforts going into this direction. Now, obviously, Amazon, Ikea have been trying uh, for the last uh, year year or so, uh, but you'll see this evolution sort of continue as these products become more simpler to use uh, for, for the end, end consumer. And this opportunity for a retail is just too uh, big to ignore because if you have three to four billion people, your consumers out there with these devices, you can leverage that to reduce your return rates, you can leverage that to inspire them to buy your products, and also advertising. In fact, uh, the number that you see over here, the 1.6 billion going to 13, that's the sum total of software uh, spending that's happening on cell phones in AR. Right now, obviously, Snapchat is taking a big portion of that, likes of Pokemon Go uh, are taking a big portion of that, but we are seeing that evolution happen even in advertising. So in advertising, you're seeing uh, growth happening from things like lenses that Snapchat is pushing. You know, BMW did this AR experience where you could see uh, the uh, you could see the car in front of your uh, house, and you could like uh, visualize the product and, and things like that. And we're seeing more and more brands actually go after this kind of advertising to differentiate themselves for now. But after uh, the supply chain has evolved, after 5G does come online with respect to the bandwidth requirements that we have, you would see that thing go mainstream and it won't be, a, it won't be an option anymore. So investments that are happening in, in, in AR side from an advertising standpoint are mostly experimental, but in the end, it'll be sort of a need. So we see a massive growth happening in uh, AR advertising. And uh, so some, uh, we get some questions about like, okay, how, how would uh, AR advertising really work in a physical form uh, when the mainstream uh, products are out there? You know, Mark Zuckerberg wants these products to look like the glasses so that everybody could uh, uh, use that in, in real life. But location-based advertising is one of the fastest uh, growing advertising sections uh, within the uh, ecosystem. So you could imagine where everybody who's walking down the street sees different things around them, uh, uh, personalized for them based on their location and things like that. So you, you will see more momentum uh, taking place in, uh, in uh, advertising in general and AR. But what are the problems that need to be solved first? Uh, and we think like Facebook is really leading the innovation charge here. Uh, there are some really hard problems. The reason why the user experience chart that you saw first uh, has not really uh, inspired the mainstream adoption is because the supply chain is not really ready. The bandwidth requirements are very high, so we are still waiting on 5G to make that experience irresistible. Everybody's sold on the idea of like, hey, this would be great to visualize. This would be a great world to compute and live in, work in. But that reality is a little far away. And that's why this push towards enterprise is happening right now so that we can wait for the ecosystem to really evolve uh, around that. So what Facebook is doing is essentially, you know, we are solving problems like locomotion, solving problems like uh, the display uh, technologies and uh, make, shrinking the product. Battery life, there are, there are a lot of issues over here, uh, that, uh, but the evolution is happening, and I think like with new technologies and standalone products that are coming online starting this year, you will see increased adoption in consumers. Uh, gaming is a big one. Obviously, this is the one that talked about most 100 million uh, plus 
uh, gamers are really awaiting the simplicity of uh, VR. We know with the next PlayStation uh, coming out next year, we expect that to be a catalyst for, uh, for adoption to work. Four million have been sold so far. So you could see some catalysts coming online that could also help. And lastly, voice. Is, this is a big one. Uh, we're seeing increased adoption of voice search. We're seeing increased uh, consumer comfort level with this level of interaction with these devices because, you know, in AR and VR, you need to interact somehow. And voice is becoming uh, super critical in terms of that. And last but not the least, you know, 5G is the critical enabler over here for AR and VR because the bandwidth requirements. And, and that's mostly due to the benefits of, you know, in 200 times download speeds, you have the latency so that you don't feel sick uh, and things like that. So the experience is now uh, coming together. Your devices need to be light. So what you're going to end up seeing over the next couple of years really is the ecosystem is evolving. The enterprise will surprise in the next uh, couple of years. But it will take time for ARVR to go mainstream in consumers. Uh, but, but in the end, with 5G's uh, adoption rate and curve, next couple of years, you won't be surprised with, with the adoption. Uh, thank you so much for the time uh, that you have given me, and I hope this gave you a glimpse of uh, what we are seeing uh, coming down the pipe. Thank you.